Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Borough of Queens and to Queensboro Community College. I am Ellen Hardigan. I'm the Vice President for Student Affairs here at the college, and I am especially delighted to see so many of you present to celebrate this opening of Queensboro's Veterans Center. At this time, please rise for the presentation of colors presented by the Fort Schuyler Color Guard, and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by our national anthem. Will Dr. Paul Jean-Pierre, Associate Dean of Students and United States Army veteran, please join me at the lectern to lead us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God with liberty liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dr. Jean-Pierre. At this time, I would like Richard McMichael and Shanae Campbell to please join me on stage to sing the national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the rain we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land, land of the free and the home of the brave? Thank you, and a special thanks to Dr. Joseph Nagler, who is the chairperson of our college's music department, for selecting our students who were today's performers. Thank you very, very much. Please remain standing for one more moment. As you know, as many of you know, as we all know, we're 
able to gather here this afternoon in large part thanks to the efforts of our armed forces. I now ask you to join me in a moment of silence to honor all of our fallen heroes. Thank you, and please be seated. Here to bring greetings on behalf of the college is our president, president of Queensboro Community College, Dr. Eduardo J. Marti. Thank you, Vice President Hardigan, and thank you, Dr. Rustin. Uh, these two individuals and many others in the campus com came together and created a proposal uh, to seek some funding so that we would have a place where the veterans would be, feel welcomed at our institution. You know, community colleges are the portals of entry into the great university, the great city university of New York. And as portals of entry, we welcome everyone who comes to us. And everyone who comes to us, in one way or the other, has special needs. There is the underprepared student that needs remediation. There is the mother with two children or three children and having to f fight to get some money in order to be able to pay the tuition and we help her through financial aid and scholarships. And we have a, an obligation to help our veterans. It is important that we recognize that this open environment that we host here at Queensboro Community College is one in which our veterans can come and feel that this is an oasis for them, a place where they will get the support, they will get the help, they will get the information that is necessary for them to get reacquainted with civilian life for those that are coming back from the present wars and for those who have been in other wars and have served the country in times of peace to be able to use our facilities to better their own lives. I cannot tell you how proud I am of the fact that we have this center at this institution. As you very well know, I'm one of those proud citizens who chose to be here. I love this country and I love everything that it stands for. And because of that, I believe that the individuals who place their lives in harm's way in order to defend this country deserve to be honored and deserve to be served by those of us who serve. So thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Stan. And thank you, the central office, for providing some funding. But most of all, thanks to the veterans who place their lives in harm's way for our safety. I am extremely proud to be part of this ceremony today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marti. And who ever coined the phrase, timing is everything? However, I will allow the next speaker to take a moment or two. Here to bring greetings from the great borough of Queens, the place where I was born and raised, is the Queensboro president, borough president, Helen Marshall. Dr. Marti, my colleagues in government, um, Hiram Monserrat, who's the chair of the Veterans Committee in the City Council, and Tony Avella, um, representing College Point, and David Weprin, who is uh, chair of our, our, budget, our finance committee. And to all of those who are gathered here today, this is really very special today. Uh, this is the first attempt that I've really heard of a significant hand to be reached out to our veterans who have recently come back. 
Um, I remember I was a kid in high school um, when the war ended, um, World War II that is, and so many benefits went to the veterans. I know some of the people who are sitting here probably benefited from the 5220 Club. Um, I know my cousin went, was able to go through college on that money, even though it was a small amount, but at least it helped him. He became a great surgeon. Uh, and I remember fellas who were a little bit, uh, quite a bit older than us, sitting in our classroom with dignity and respected by all of us. Our veterans today don't come home to that. I remember when a veteran came home from the war, it was a block party, a sign that went all the way across the street welcoming home. How many people here remember that after World War II? You can put your hand up, that's okay. If I'm saying it, you can say, you can let everybody know how old you are. Um, it's wonderful that we're, we're around to, to see how things evolve. But here, Queensboro Community College, out of their own money, stepped up to the plate and said, we're going to do something. But I'm not surprised. Dr. Marty is a fantastic, wonderful man and has so many wonderful things going on on this college. <laughs> and today, our veterans will be able to come back and actually get participate in their education. They need all the services that they can get. Many of them even join the service because all of these are volunteer army. Many of these young people join the service to, either, to make a better place in the world for themselves in order to get a college education, sometimes to get out of a, a situation in their communities that they, weren't, they, they didn't like what was going on. Um, and so they are, they are the, the heart and soul of our, our, our country. And we deserve to do everything that we can. We, we must do everything that we can to help them on their way. Fortunately, those who are able to come back and forth to school, um, that will be a wonderful for them. And, and they'll be, it's just going to be a wonderful thing. They're going to be able to get the skills that they need to go on with their lives. Right now, they have come through a war that was, in fact, this war is very different than the World War II. Um, everybody knew the enemy. Um, today, we're not so sure that we're, the person that we're killing is an enemy or just an innocent victim. The, war, the wars are different. But certainly to be back on track, and let me tell you, we're not doing at all what we should be doing for our veterans. We're not doing it at all as much as we should be doing. Because I get requests all the time trying to help veterans and their families out. And for my State of the Borough address, I brought in all the families that I could get to come to, to Queens College where we held, it, where we held that. And I, I presented each of those families with very special um, um, recognition. And it was difficult because I have to do a speech and I'm looking into the eyes particularly of one mother whose son is still missing. You know, and I'm filling up and she's filling up and it was a really hard thing. But there was one man who had a little boy with him and so I said, oh, it was your brother to the, the man. He says, no, it was his brother. The little fellow was only about four years old. And um, I don't know if he, if he understood the gravity of what was going on, but um, he was glad to be there, and I had him, I lifted him up so he could speak into the microphone and tell the people why he was there. Um, war is always sad, and this war is very sad, and we're hoping that soon it will end. Actually, America is speaking out. America is speaking out. You're speaking out when you're going to the polls. People who support this war don't have hardly a chance of, of winning a re-election. And, uh, and some of the stand that our president has taken is also had its, had its effect on the population. The people do not want this war to continue. We've done so much, so much, that, we, so much that we could have done for this country that is under, you know, that it's a civil war now. And, and I think that we've put enough into that country to help it to stand on its own two feet, and I think that they would like it to be that way. So um, one thing, Queensboro Community College is on target. I'm so happy to hear that you're doing this, Dr. Marty. Any way that I can help, just let me know. And it should be coming out of the federal budget. Thank you, Borough President. And now I'd like to introduce Hiram Montserrat, chairperson of the Veterans Committee and a Queensboro Community College alumnus. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's uh, always an honor to come back to Queensborough Community College. I spent a uh, couple of years working on an associate's degree here 
a few years ago, uh, I was a full-time student and a full-time police officer. And um, I patrolled this very neighborhood at the 111 precinct for about 10 years. And during that time frame, I attended both Queensboro and Queens College. But I, I want to say that um, I am very proud to see how this community college continues to progress. You know, I've had the opportunities to attend uh, naturalization services right here in this room uh, and see hundreds of new Americans become citizens. And I've also been here and I've attended um, events for the uh, Holocaust Resource Center that we have here, or the, uh, that's uh, being directed by, I believe, Mr. Flug. And today I'm here to see how Queensboro Community College continues to be cutting edge and to provide more, not just for the students of this institution, but for all the borough of Queens. For that, I think we owe a great debt of gratitude to the leadership of this university, and in particular, its president, Mr. Marti. We want to thank you again for all your leadership and uh, support of our great borough and our institution. But I also want to take the opportunity to say that, yes, I am the chair of the Veterans Committee, but I'm also a uh, veteran uh, uh, of the United States Marine Corps. And uh, I have worn, yeah, thank you very much. But it matters not whether you were a member of the Marines or the Army or the Coast Guard or the Navy or the Air Force or even our merchant Marines. Um, the reality is, is that there are hundreds of thousands of us here in the city of New York who wore a uniform. And that uniform represented something. And we all, at one point or the other, in some capacity, represented this great nation that we call home. Uh, that with its flaws continues to be a beacon of hope for the entire planet. And how important that dedication and that service was that we provided. That we now should never allow for government at any level to forget the contributions of our veterans to our society. And I have done my small role as chair of the Veterans Committee with the support of my colleagues, two of which are here today, Council Members David Weprin and Tony Avella, for the first time in the history of the city of New York, we spearheaded a, a million dollar initiative to provide services for our vets from the city's budget. Now, the borough president rightly pointed out that the federal government should be doing so much more, and they haven't. And for that, we should also remember that we should continue to send that message to our federal representatives that they need to ensure that we do more. But the, st the city has stepped up to the plate particularly now when we understand that in our current engagement we have lost over 3,000 boys and girls overseas, not to mention the other thousands that we have lost in other engagements and assignments as our veterans and armed forces continue to serve us. So I just want to close by saying that I am very happy that it's Queensboro Community College, uh, another place that I call home, uh, that is, again, doing the right thing by our vets, and I want to thank you all for attending today, and Semper Fi. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And now it's my honor to introduce Council Member David Weprin, who is also Chairperson of the City Council Finance Committee. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, but more importantly, I'm also uh, Queensboro Community College's council member. You can applaud that. <laughs> really, it, it's always a pleasure to be back here at uh, Queensboro. And as was mentioned, um, I'm happy to see Queensboro really um, in the forefront of uh, new initiatives and uh, really taking the lead, uh, not only here in Queens, but really citywide. And I give a lot of that credit to uh, the great president, uh, Dr. Eduardo Marti. You can applaud that. Uh, I had an intern about a year ago who was probably one of the best interns I've ever had. And he was actually singled out at uh, Queensboro's graduation last year. He was a Queensboro student, but he was also um, a veteran of uh, both uh, Afghanistan and Iran and, uh, and Iraq. 
and um, he, uh, he actually did a couple of duties of service, and then he graduated from Queensborough, and then he actually went back uh, for further duty. His, his name was Michael, is Michael Villacrest, and um, he really um, loved Queensborough, and uh, he loved the armed forces, and it would have been great to have a center like this uh, when he was here, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be coming back and, uh, and seeing this uh, center and the services it will provide. Because as was pointed out, we really don't do enough uh, for our veterans, for our heroes. Uh, these are difficult times. It's difficult uh, to come back. And uh, unlike after World War II, you're not always welcomed as uh, a returning hero, as the borough president referred. But we really need initiatives um, like the initiative uh, Council Member Montserrat referred to like the leadership that uh, Dr. Marty is taking with this particular center, really to, um, to provide what's really necessary uh, for our returning veterans, uh, the, the types of resources that they need, the types of services they need, the type of inf information and help. And I will do everything in my power, uh, both as a local council member and as head of the Finance Committee, to see that that happens. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member, and I now am honored to introduce Tony Avella. And Tony is a Council Member and also Chairperson of Zoning and Franchises. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank Queensborough Community College and Dr. Marty for one more initiative on behalf of the people of this city, and of course, more importantly, for the veterans. What I'd like to do, and I don't think anybody's done this so far, is I'd like to ask all the veterans in the room to stand up and be acknowledged for their service. Thank you. You know, obviously this is a great day for uh, Queensborough Community and College and the veterans that will come through this resource center. And as Borough President Helen Marshall said, and as uh, the chairman of the Veterans Committee, Hiram Mott said, and by the way, I serve on the Veterans Committee as well, we need to do more. What Hiram didn't tell you is the $1 million package that we got was supposed to be $5 million we were trying to do. Unfortunately, we didn't get, yeah, I'm looking, we, we, he left. <laughs> Council member Helen Sears, ladies and gentlemen. You can applaud. Isn't it? <laughs> I didn't see him leave, I'm sorry. But we started out for a $5 million project so that each borough would have a million dollars. Unfortunately, it was reduced to a million, but it only, emphasizes the fact that we need to do more. And I'm speaking to the veterans that just stood up, the ones that are not here, and certainly the ones that are coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan and other places across the world. Without you, we would not be able to stand here. We would not have the liberties that we do each and every day, and certainly the quality of life that is unparalleled in the history of this world. We have only done, we've only tipped the tip of the iceberg in terms of services. We need to do more, much more, and you should hold the feet of all the elected officials, not only those that are here, but everybody in the city and state and federal level to make sure that more gets done. Because we owe you a debt of gratitude that can never be repaid. Thank you for your service, and thank you, Dr. Marty and Queensborough Community College for doing this. Council Member Helen Sears. I, I do better this way, instead of leaning over. It's wonderful to see all of you here, and I want to thank my colleagues and Dr. Marty and our borough president, Helen, C uh, Helen, I'm going to call you me, Helen Marshall. She usually calls us H&H. &H. Uh, 
but it's, it's real, you know, as I was sitting there and I reflected for a moment, you took me back to some family history. My father-in-law was a veteran, my brother-in-law was a veteran, my husband was a veteran, and three of my uncles are veterans. So that's a long history in a family to do that. And as I look out, I see friends who are veterans and have never given up fighting for the causes for the veterans. And yes, it's true what Tony says, that we wanted to have a $5 million initiative for the veterans, and it was reduced to a million. We had some very hard decisions to make at that time. And the City University knew only too well the cuts that we had to make and what we would restore, and we're going to go through that. 09 and 010 are very, very hard years. And, and we have to weigh very carefully just what do we keep out and what do we put back in. And always, first and foremost, is what do we do for the veterans. And rather than having a, a blank page, we put in there as much as we can because you always come at the very top of the list. And it's very difficult when we have to make those priorities. But we can never thank you enough for what you have done and what you continue to do for us. And you are a wonderful history in our lives. And our youth and those that are in the university, and it's wonderful that you have this. And I do hope that all your students get to come through here, walk through here, and, and know exactly what it means to have people that, have, that are heroes because they believe in the Constitution of the United States, they believe in freedom, and they believe in education for all. So it certainly is a wonderful, wonderful place for everybody to come together and to say thank you. And as we look at the pictures and we look at what is going on in here, we have to be very grateful that we have students at the university, at, at uh, Queensboro Community College, that to be able to share in the history and to know what it means to be able to work and protect for others. So thank you very much for this. It's very meaningful. And, and thank you all for everything you do. Thank you, council member. At this time, I would like to acknowledge several other special guests who have joined us today. Representing Mayor Michael Bloomberg, I would like to ask Clarice Jones and Letitia Lamott to please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Representing Senator Malcolm A. Smith, Mr. Kenneth Haygood. Kenneth is here. He's on his way, I hope. Cheryl Levine, president of the Queensboro Community College Alumni Association, was planning to join us. Wilfred Cotto, who is the City University of New York Director of Veterans Services. Thank you so much for joining us. Mr. Paul Narson, who is the first vice president of the Queens Chapter 32 of the Vietnam Veterans of America. Please stand. Jean Birch, Community Relations Representative, Senator Serfin Maltese, thank you. We appreciate that. And also, uh, Peter Murkowski, Peter is uh, here, and he is uh, the New York Regional Office for the Department of Veterans Affairs. Thank you. Before I introduce our keynote speaker, I must take this opportunity to acknowledge some individuals who have been most instrumental in turning the idea of a veteran center here at Queensboro Community College into a reality. The first gentleman is one who some 40 years ago, sorry, I have to acknowledge it was 40 years ago, <laughs> began his most impressive work in guiding and assisting those soldiers returning from the Vietnam War who were interested in pursuing a college degree. He was also the person who wrote our most recent proposal to the City University of New York, Vice Chancellor, enabling Queensboro to secure the funding for this new veteran center. 
Would Dr. Stanley Rustin please stand and be recognized? Thank you, Stan. Also, I wish to introduce Ms. Maria Saltis and Dr. Andrea Cohen, members of our College Counseling Center. Maria and Andrea are coordinators of the Veterans Center. Would they please stand and be recognized? Thank you both very much for all the work you're about to embark upon. And finally, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Victor DeFazio, retired faculty member of the Queensborough Counseling Center and the former Veterans Affairs Coordinator, and he has also joined us here this afternoon. Victor? <laughs> there he is. Thank you. Thank you. And now I am honored to introduce our keynote speaker, the Vice Chancellor for Student Development at the City University of New York. He served in the United States Army in the Vietnam War. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Gary W. Moore. Good afternoon. It is indeed my pleasure as a veteran to be here among you today because all of us realize that serving in the military, it didn't have to be this way. But we're very blessed to be here and to share in this special occasion. Now, I know when you looked on your program and you saw a keynote speaker, some of you said, oh my God, you know, another hour or so. <laughs> but let me say this. Growing up in a Baptist church, I recall the pastor standing up and preaching, and after 30 minutes looking at his watch and even taking it off, and you're thinking that he's finished. 30 minutes later, you're still there, only to realize that that meant absolutely nothing except that he took his watch off. But let me say that I give you a gift today, and that gift is that I will be extremely brief. I am proud today, as you should be, to be here in a center that will be used by veterans and especially those veterans who are part of this college and who are at, in this community. We have identified at the City University of New York approximately 1,700 student veterans and reservists enrolled in our university. This places the university in the top 10 for veteran student enrollment among U.S. higher education institutions. But just saying that means absolutely nothing unless we take the ball and do what Queensboro is doing today, provide services and programs and opportunities for veterans to get back into the community and be successful. And my hat is off to you, Queensboro. Thank you. We anticipate further growth. And yes, we will be looking to the, the, the city council and the legislators to help us to welcome our veterans home. We expect, as reported from the Department of Veterans Affairs, about 6,000 veterans to return to the greater New York City area. And we expect upwards of 10,000 more veterans to be back into our community returning from Iraq and Afghanistan during the next few years. We need to be ready for them when they return. Let's not wait until they knock on our door. Let's go out and find them. I am so proud that this center will provide opportunities for our veterans to receive academic advising and tutoring, counseling services, advice on financial aid and benefits, job placement, counseling services for their mental health issues that they bring back. And yes, all of us have some mental health issues that we deal with. Some deal with them more easily than others. And we have to be prepared to address these serious issues. CUNY is very, very serious about making a positive difference in the lives of our veterans. And we are therefore collaborating with the mayor's office we're collaborating with Albany. We're collaborating with Washington 
to make sure that we find and identify the resources that are necessary to help our veterans. I can assure you that the educational needs of our veterans will remain a top priority at CUNY. We deeply value their service and their experiences and welcome the countless ways veterans enrich, enrich, enrich our classrooms and our campuses and our communities. They enrich our society. And let's not forget that. Our outreach efforts and campus services are aimed at helping veterans to readjust to civilian life and take full advantage of the lifelong benefits higher education offers and which they so richly deserve. So Dr. Marti, Dr. Hardigan, Stan, thank you. Thank you over and over again for this wonderful center and for all that you continue to do to help our veterans. We know that veteran student success depends on the implementation of a vibrant veterans project on each campus. And today, I'm proud to say that we can celebrate Queensboro in doing the right thing in supporting our veterans. Historically, Queensboro Community College has provided services for returning veterans and reservists. So this is nothing new for them. They're doing what they've always done, but they're doing it better each day. In fact, back in the 70s, as you have already heard, there were two psychologists here at Queensboro that worked with our Vietnam era veterans. I know how important that is, because when I got out of the military and I returned to school, there was, uh, we had the counseling and we had the uh, mentoring services in place to help me be successful. And so I'm very grateful that the trend is continuing. I want to take my hat off to all of you veterans because it's not just about having a ceremony, but it's about reaching out and ask and inviting you here. I see some that are of various ages here today, and I am so proud to see that because, as I said earlier, it doesn't have to be this way. And we all should be so grateful that we have this very opportunity to thank God and to thank our families and to thank our fellow soldiers for this opportunity on this day to be here. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. At this time, I would like to ask the following individuals uh, to join me front of the stage for uh, the ribbon cutting, which will signify the official opening of our Veteran Center. Borough President Marshall, Dr. Marti, Vice Chancellor Moore, Council Member Weprin, Council Member Avella, Council Member Sears, please join me in front for our ribbon cutting. Yes. Dr. Rustin, would you please join us as well? And I would ask that maybe a student or two, a currently enrolled student, I know we do have uh, students who are members of the current veterans. Uh, yes, please come up and join us. And you have to forgive me, I don't have enough for all, but, and these are, I must say, frightening. <laughs> We have one more. We have, and to our uh, students. Okay, if you want to. Uh, let me get I introduce. Thank you. We do one shot and then we cut on three. Yeah. Dr. Marti, you're going to do one, two, three? One, two, three. 
Actually, uh, please, yes. I'll gift to you. Yes, you. Uh, we have boxes for you because I don't think you want to be on the LIE with those. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Paul. Oh, yes, you are keeping that. Oh, I'll gift to you. Get it for you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have one more, one more uh, reflection. I would ask at this time. I would ask that one of our alums, a recent alum, Mr. Claude Copeland, if he would please join me here on stage. And he's going to uh, talk a bit, uh, reflections by a Queensboro alumnus, and he's also a specialist, United States Army Active Reserves. Is Claude here? Yeah, there you are. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Uh, last time I was here was in the fall of 06. And um, I started in the summer of 05, so I actually got through pretty quick. And I passed my CPE the second time, fortunately. Um, when I, uh, my separation date was in April of 05. I had spent four years in active duty. I was able to go to Korea for a year, nine months in Germany, and 15 months in Iraq. Um, when I got out, I was fortunate enough to know a little bit about the college system to be able to find out the proper ways to go about getting my financial aid and other ways to pay for school and who to contact um, through the Veterans Benefits Department, which was usually just an automated number to talk to and not too many people to see who would actually re really be able to help you out. Um, when I got here to Queensboro, though, I was fortunate to choose this as my first school because it was very welcoming, I mean veteran or otherwise, and I was able to get into a lot of good programs, like I work with Dr. Flug at the Holocaust Resource Center, which is going to be great by next year that they're building up now. Um, I was able to work with Dr. Levy with the school newspaper, which also uh, Michael Villacrest also was working with, and I had the fortunate opportunity to work with him um, on the newspaper. He's a great guy, and I know he'll be back soon. Um, while I was here at Queensboro, though, um, I was just very happy to see that they're taking this initiative also for the Veterans Center because there really isn't too much. I mean, you get a couple numbers to read and you pretty much have to do it on your own. And like sometimes, unless you're somebody who's in the government, you really don't know how to do it either. Uh, but now I'm glad that people have somewhere to go. and. Um, I think this will be very influential for other schools to do, not only community colleges, but larger schools as well. Um, if not on as large a basis, since they might not have as many veterans, but it's still something that should be considered because it's, it's, a, it's a hard transition sometimes, you know? You get used to one set of, of things to do, and then you got to come out and pretty much you have all these options, and it's kind of a little overwhelming. But um, fortunately, when I came here to Queensboro, I was able to get a good focus, and now I'm actually attending Hofstra, and it's, it's helped a lot, you know? Um, I, feel, I feel that this has helped to secure a lot of other veterans, hopefully, to come here and get a good start to their college career as well. Thank you. Thank you, Claude, and all the best with the continuation of your studies at Hofstra University. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our formal ceremony. I want to thank you once again for joining us this afternoon. At this time, I would ask that you please join me for some light refreshments. And for those of you who are leaving campus this afternoon, please have a safe trip home. Thank you. <laughs>